Hello, Mathieu from Syme here. Thank you for joining me today in this uh, tutorial about managing and organizing your photos. We will see today how Picto can be the ideal companion for your photo organization and uh, exploration needs. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if your workflows are not covered um, by what you're going to see uh, today, please use the comments area below to uh, ask for more questions or ask for more content and we'll reply happily. And now, let's dive in. Picto 1.9 comes with a new integration in the form of a new workspace dedicated to on one photo row. As you can see from the uh, sidebar, the workspace is here, ready to be added. But before we dive into that new workspace, let's uh, have a look at how On1 works in detail. On1, like uh, the Exo Lab for which we did the integration earlier on, uh, relies on sidecars. Sidecars are small files that uh, uh, live next to the image file itself. And the sidecars contain um, both metadata and instructions on how to render a specific version of that file um, if you've performed edits uh, on the file using using on one. The sidecar can contain multiple versions of the file because you can create multiple variants uh, inside uh, on one. So every time you use a slider, you apply a preset, you do anything uh, in on one it will uh, update that sidecar and uh, uh, write inside in, in text form what are the changes that were uh, applied. And uh, on one simply passes that file in order to rerun those and to replay those changes on the image and generate a preview. Um, the same applies to metadata. If you use a uh, keyword AI, for example, to add uh, uh, keywords to your um, images inside on one, those keywords are stored in that file as well. What's the result for us? Every time we we scan a watched folder, so that's a folder that you uh, added into Picto or one of its subfolders, we'll check the presence of those uh, sidecars. And every time we come across a sidecar, uh, we look into the image next to it and we decide that uh, this image has an on one version. Then we look for a preview of that version in, on the system uh, because we know where on one stores them. So instead of displaying the preview of the raw image, we're going to display uh, the preview that was generated by On1. And we'd add a little label to the image saying that it's an On1 version. And then um, we are going to group all those On1 edited files for easy retrieval inside the workspace. So let's see that in action right now. Now back to Picto, let's activate the On1 photo raw workspace by clicking on the plus button. What will happen is that all my watched folders, all the hierarchies of subfolders will be scanned and uh, tested for the presence of sidecars. If any sidecar is found, it will be treated as a version of on one. Now my workspace is active. I have the three nodes, all versions, last edit and work folders. And as you can see, if I click on all versions, these are the uh, previews from on one you see the little on one uh, icon in the label that are associated with sidecars that were found in those folders. For example, if I go and show master image in Finder, as you can see, this image has an XMP file and has also an on one sidecar here. So Picto finds the previews and renders them here. If I click on last edit, it's just uh, the same images, but ordered in a chronological order of their edits. And work folder is where new edits that I made with on one uh, will be put. We'll see that uh, a little bit later. First of all, let's see what happens when we add uh, just a regular folder in uh, Picto a folder that has been visited by on one and which contains uh, on one versions. So here I'm looking at um, a simple folder, which is not part of my catalog. I'm just browsing here. Uh, this folder is called Flamingos. And in this folder, I've performed some edits on some images. 
like you see here. Um, I've also rejected some images and I've added some metadata like stars to other images. If I look in the finder, this folder is here with these uh, uh, seven images and a few um, on one sidecars. These sidecars either contain edits or description of the edits or they can contain also simple metadata changes without changes to the pictures themselves. <coughs> what I will do is I will now simply add that folder to Picto. So if I look in the folder itself, I can see my images with uh, their proper rendition and I have a little on one badge um, <clears throat> next to uh, each uh, thumbnail that uh, corresponds to a version that has been edited. And I can see my metadata coming from on one that's flowing into Picto. And if I go into the on one photo row, workspace that's ordered by last edits I can see these images that have been uh, edited at different times uh, being added to the flow of images every version that's been edited on one is conveniently organized in either the old versions or the last edits for easy retrieval in this next example we are going to add not any folder but a folder that is already catalogued in on one. So if I go into my catalogs, you can see Morning on the Lake uh, has been catalogued here. And uh, as you can guess, there are some images that have been edited here. You can see from the little icon, little badge at the bottom. Um, some some of these images exist six of them have been uh, have been edited in on one including some images have a version so here uh, i have uh, one single master file but i have two versions created in on one with uh, slightly different renderings and um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to add that folder into picto so i simply drop it and the folder is now being ingested so this takes a few a few seconds and in this process as for any folder picto will generate previews but if it encounters any of those uh, on one or any sidecars it will do the appropriate thing in the case of on one it will find the preview and render it. So the thumbnails are being uh, generated and as you can see there are already some thumbnails that um, are coming from uh, from on one with a little badge here. I can see here one of those two versions and the rest should come in a few seconds. All right so AI is uh, is now being rendered as well for those images. So if I go now to my on one photo row um, section what i see is that a whole lot of images have been added here and this is because um, when you add a, a folder as a catalog folder in in on one it will generate a sidecar for every image that is uh, that is in the folder so now every image in that folder has the little on one um, badge that tells me that it's an image that has been uh, edited in, in on one. So let's try to edit one of those images. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take one that is a little bit further there. Edit with on one photo row. So that's an image that's already in on one. <clears throat> and th this dialog tells me that uh, what's what's going to happen and namely that if my image is in a is in a folder I watch, I need to um, I need to do a refresh of that uh, of that folder once the edit has been performed. It also tells me that due to a current limitation in on one, I will be asked to save a version of that image. I I don't need this rendition, but uh, on one just ask me to save one. So we'll we will do that. one is opening now and for that specific image
right so the image has been uh, has been loaded what i will do is i will do something really simple <clears throat> as an edit i will simply crop the image like that apply and then i click on done this is where on one will ask me to save that image <clears throat> you need to save it in order for the uh, um, for the sidecar to be updated and we need the sidecar to be updated in order for picto to pick the change but uh, you don't really need to save it so in this example i'm going to save it somewhere uh, in the temporary directory uh, and i save it as jpeg to make it really small right and then now when i switch back to picto now the morning on the lake has this, little, has this little icon that tells me that something has changed in it so i can click on it and sure enough if i go to last edits the image will be at the top with the uh, correct aspect ratio but you will also see it in the source in which the edit took uh, took place for example if i switch on morning on the lake um, i will also see the um, the image uh, here we've seen that um, on one asks you to uh, to save the image the rendition in um, in order for the sidecar to be updated and i've saved it in a temporary location but i could well uh, choose to save that image in um, in a real location suppose that i want to keep my renditions so i'm going to do that now to illustrate that i'm going to create a folder called renditions And I will uh, ingest that folder in Picto. It's empty. Switching back to uh, to this one, I'm going to edit now this image. So let's do something uh, really simple here. Okay, and I'm going to change the sky just for the image to be recognizable. Okay, something quite dramatic like that. I click on the done button. This is why it asks me to save the image. And now I'm going to choose to save it in my new rendition folder. Okay. Going back to Picto, so I now have two little uh, icons telling me that something has changed. So I can click on Morning on the Lake to update. And sure enough, my image now uh, has been updated. And I can click on Last Edits and it should be at the top. And I will also click on my rendition. Um, synchronization wheel here to get uh, the image of the rendition so you might wonder why um, those two images are not part of the same instant and this is simply due to the fact that um, the metadata in those images is different the in particular the the time of the day for those images is not the same and uh, instant are based on the metadata so i can decide to merge those images in order to create a, a single instant with them and this will then uh, give me the ability to see both inside the same instant but be aware that when you export jpegs sometimes the um, the time can be different simply because of the time zone so here we have 645 and 445 which explains why these images are not in the same instant in scenario two and three that we are going to look at the image doesn't live in a in a folder well it lives in a folder but it it, it is also referenced by a catalog for example capture one or luminar or lightroom and of course the image lives in a master folder if I want to make an edit 
um, of this image from one of those catalogs, I can um, invoke on one on that image and it will simply create um, a sidecar next to the original file in the master folder regardless where this master folder lives. And this is usually not a master folder that is directly referenced inside Picto, it's referenced via its uh, um, via the app that uh, controls that folder or the content of that folder, for example, Lightroom. There is a way to, uh, to invoke those edits um, in place, so that without moving the file. And in scenario three, we are going to see how sometimes it is uh, required to actually move the file in the work folder. In the, in the example of Apple Photos, for example, or any other app uh, that um, stores the, the image files inside its catalog, we are in the situation where it's safe to move the image outside in order to do the edits, rather than to mess around in the existing catalog structure. So typically, if you're editing from Apple Photos, we will create a copy uh, inside the work folder. You can also create copies yourself by dragging an image directly into the work folder. This is what we're going to look at now. So far, we've been uh, looking at editing in on one in the context of files and folders. So we had a, we had some watched folders in which we we had on one sidecars or we had some images in in folders that we wanted to edit inside on one. But now let's have a look at what happens when the image you want to edit is not um, simply in a, in a folder, but uh, also lives in a, in a catalog. So here I'm looking at a, an album that I've created, which contains three images that I'd like to edit. And some of them are in Luminar and some of them um, are in Lightroom. So in order to do that, I simply uh, take the image that I want to work on and I will um, use the work folder to perform the edit. By using the work folder, I will uh, copy the master of that image in a safe location, which is uh, uh, where the work folder lives. And this is where my uh, sidecars are going to be created afterwards. So that's the first scenario using the work folder. So here I'm in uh, on one now with, uh, with this image. Uh, let's do something really straightforward um, turn it to black and white okay I click on done as you can see it offers me to save a rendition inside the work folder I will I don't need that rendition so I'm going to um, save it somewhere else temporary location I just don't need it and um, I just want the um, the sidecar to be created so if I go back to Picto now my work folder will will update and I now have uh, a new version for that image that was created in on one as you can see I had other versions already including the one in Lightroom from which I started uh, but there was also one in the finder. So this is how you can um, perform edits using the using the work folder, and you can always go back to on one for that for that image simply by launching the um, uh, fr from within Picto and uh, and choose to to make uh, further changes. I can replace the rendition. And now Picto will refresh and um, update its preview as well for that uh, specific image. As mentioned in the introduction, there are situations where editing a copy is the only option. And that is when the uh, the source image is embedded in the catalog, like for example in Apple Photos, but it can also happen with uh, Capture One. Um, 
the image lives inside the catalog package so it is currently unsafe to edit it in place because it's really hidden from your site so in order to prevent that from happening the options to edit in place are grayed out the only available option is the one where a copy is going to be created so if i select edit a copy the uh, master file embedded in my photos library is going to be copied inside the work folder where it is then in plain sight and where it will be uh, edited so the sidecar is going to be created there and i'm going to edit a safe copy of that original the second scenario is when you want to edit an image that lives in a in a catalog already um, like in this example i'm looking at a lightroom catalog here and i want to make an edit on, on this image but i don't want to make a copy so you can still edit in workspace in on one uh, by choosing the first option the second option is editing a copy in the work folder which is exactly what we've done when we did a drag and drop previously editing in on one photo row is simply edit in place so the master will stay where it is in whatever folder it is and um, the uh, sidecar will be created next to that ma to that master in that location there is an important caveat in um, in this scenario because remember that picto is permanently scanning folder locations to find sidecars and to find modification of those sidecars but here in this example this image is currently not living in a in the folder that uh, picto manages because it lives in a folder where lightroom has stored its masters so in order to to solve that uh, situation whenever you start editing an image that uh, lives in one of those folders um, picto is going to add that location in a list of folders that it manages for that workspace so if i go back here to on one photo row and i do edit workspace integration as you can see there is a there is a new folder that's been added into that list and this is a list of folders that are specifically watched for uh, on one photo row sidecast so every time you edit an image in place uh, in a folder that is not part of the list of watched folders that picto manages here it will add it to that list and you can manage that list you can remove folders if you want to just be careful because it's simply going to stop syncing on the changes of those folders for sidecars um, but you can also add folders that uh, picto should know about without having to add them uh, here in the list of watched folders so for example you could say i have a master folder where all my masters are stored so i could add the parent uh, folder in that uh, in that list this will guarantee that all the sidecars uh, that live in that hierarchy will be uh, detected by picto whenever it checks for updates regardless whether the, the sources that um, these sidecars or these masters belong to are added here okay let's go back to on one photo row we'll do a, a very simple um, change here okay done here again it asks me to save the rendition i just don't need it so okay i can quit on my photo row if i go back to my workspace if i click on all versions let's click on last edits it's going to be easier of course we see the the edit that we just performed here and this edit is now part of a bigger instance with a lightroom version a master version as a folder and this new uh, on one version and my work folder hasn't changed because this image was not added in the work folder it just lives uh, in its original location 
Last but not least, let's see how on one and P2 interact when it comes to uh, metadata. So if I select this image here and I give it five star purple color, make it favorite in on one. If I go back to pick to and synchronize that image alone. I will see that uh, new metadata coming up. Similarly, um, this image currently has uh, no keywords. If I use for this image the ability to scan using keyword AI, scan again, and add some. Uh, some keywords here from Keyword AI. I just select the next image to make sure that um, on one saves its uh, XMP file. Again, I can synchronize the version. And now the, the keywords are coming back into Picto. We hope this video helped you to see how Picto can boost your current workflow. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content like this and please make sure you give us a big thumbs up uh, as it helps us a lot. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye.